Well, we had a brainstorming session back in 2005, I think it was. We had just finished adopting our, our habitat protection program, and we were trying to come up with ideas for how we can take those concepts and actually invite and encourage people to give us some of the best ideas from around the country and around the world. And so we had all types of ideas that came out of that brainstorming session, but the one that seemed to interest most people and to actually excite our staff and, and with the possibility was a design competition. The whole point was not just to have the competition and give out awards. The whole point was to take these best practices and really um, you know, basically challenge people to be creative and really push the envelope of what's possible with integrating habitats with the built environment and the natural environment. And so the whole point was to get the best ideas, to document them, and hopefully give them to people um, as tools that they could use, whether they're property owners, developers, or anybody else, or even policymakers, citizens, to encourage these kinds of practices in their own backyard. Um, what's great about it being in Portland is because Portland's already recognized as a leader in this field, but it's a real challenging thing to figure out ways to, to integrate it with, with habitat. It's one thing to focus on pieces, whether it's stormwater or energy. It's another thing is to figure out how to make the human habitat work with the natural habitat of birds and fish and, and other wildlife. And that's what the point of this competition was. And I think it's great looking around, around the room at all the winners to see really what, how creative people really were to be able to come up with ideas to overcome that challenge. Well, the jury was a really interesting mixture of people from around the country. Uh, landscape architect, architect, planner, developer, journalist, and they all brought different perspectives together. They had to go through 107 different entries, and really there was a lot of interaction between them, so they kind of learned from one another, and then ended up coming to consensus about what the winners were. Really, the, the, the focus of this design competition is about restoring ecology and ecological health in uh, in the Portland area through the redevelopment of blocks, neighborhoods, and and, uh, and and really the whole region, and looking at things from an ecological context, and also making the connection between that approach and human health and sustainability. And I think a number of the uh, submissions in each of the three categories really hit on that as uh, as Part of the uh, part of the objective. So it's not just about uh, restoring ecology for ecology's sake, but how to integrate people back into uh, back into that kind of setting in a wholesome way. I think one of the things that you probably heard already seems like the projects where there were where there was a integrated interdisciplinary team. If you look at the award winners, you look at what disciplines they represent. I think that this project was about integration, integrating habitats. And it's, it seemed like the integrated teams that had an architect, maybe a landscape architect, a planner, an ecologist, they're the ones who are able to say something about all of the different elements that go together to create our, uh, our environment, in effect. There were folks from, I believe, seven countries, almost 350 different people that worked on it. And uh, just the number of ideas, the creativity, the different approaches to the same site and it's uh, amazing how people, uh, different people can look at the same area and propose something completely different, but also pretty cool at the same time. Well, the, the focus was pretty much laid out already in the brief. It was about sustainability, about preserving the habitat, and about water preservation. And, um, we were looking at these from various different disciplines. There were, I was an architect, there were some other specialists, landscape, water, a developer, and so on in the jury. And each of us looked for the aspects we know best, and then we discussed it together, and we were trying to find the projects which united most of the aspects the best. Well, it's really funny you asked that. Um, all of us, uh, had, we enjoyed complete uh, anonymity in terms of what we knew about who had applied and um, who had entered. We ended up with 383 participants engaged on 107 teams, um, and the work has been really neat. You know, we tried a couple of these out in the studio environment, and, and with the Metro's Grace, we've really been able to take these ideas into the competition arena. Uh, you know, developers have, a, have an expression called drop the blade. And what they do is they drop the blade and they scrape the landscape clean and then they build. 
this whole project is a very different approach. What it, is, what it says is if you have an existing oak forest or a wetland area, how do you build dwellings, commercial areas, communities in that environment without disturbing it and, and with protecting it as much as possible? Well, I think it's the topic and it's Portland. We're perceived as an international leader in the development of sustainable design and development, and the notion of integrating habitat is the next level in sustainable or low-impact design. Uh, and we're leaders in this. What I'd like to add, actually, is Portland seems to be onto something bigger than most cities are, which is this, this kind of integration of nature and humanity and human activity, which can be incredibly destructive to nature, and trying to find a really good balance between the two. And I think because you have some legislation in place, because you have some a local action in place already, because you have some great universities and, and great discussion around these issues already publicly, I think you're way ahead of most American cities, and I'm very impressed. Well, I really think the time series work is what stands out to me. The jurists really paid a lot of attention to how the details of the plan that was presented grew over time. You know, hopefully grew actually in vegetation, so how the trees grew, but also how the design aged and what different uses could happen over time as either cars went away or were minimized or as additional people moved in and occupied additional units. So that time series piece I think was really key and really um, provocative and thought provoking. Well, I'm halfway around uh, the room, so I'm not quite finished. But there's a couple that are interesting. One is trying to design a big box store. So we associate big box store with a lot of things that aren't friendly to earth or habitat. But the approach that that person took was to say, instead of having a big store in a big parking lot, we'll have a little parking lot, and we'll have the goods delivered to your home by low impact vehicles. And I just thought that was substituting a service for a parking lot. I thought that's a very interesting idea and much more creative than just a different form of the building. So I like that. And then there's one right over here going together that shows how an area can change over time and actually have more and more housing and more and more uh, oak trees uh, on the site. And that appeals to me because it seems kind of practical and I, I couldn't help thinking, well, I might be willing to live there. A three-day event that you know really started on Sunday and I mean, I think it's touched almost everyone in Metro. So many people have been involved. Um, and so, you know, this is, I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to quote David Bragdon. He just said to me, when 670 people show up in an event, it's not an event, it's a movement. Well, I think this is the start of something. It, the, uh, it's actually, you know, the end of the competition is this party, but it's really the start of something and how we convert these ideas into reality on the ground. That's the big challenge. I mean, where does it go from here? Where are you hoping it goes? Well, we're, we're going to share some of these designs around the region, show them to people, uh, work with the development industry, see that uh, we can get people to embrace it. Um, I want to give my deepest thanks to Stacy Triplett and Corey Hanlon, Harlan at Metro, um, and the people that um, she works for and that work for her. Uh, it's really been tremendous to support for this work. Um, it's a labor of love. There's so many things that um, all of us have done, um, you know, in our daily jobs, and then there's hour 41 and hour 42 and hour 43 of the week that, that have made this kind of stuff possible. And Stacy and Corey um, and the councils that support them have been just indispensable in terms of, of moving this initiative forward in a way that uh, really I think is going to have an impact to the Portland metro area for some time to come. So I want to give my deepest thanks. Awesome, thanks.